one, the Anunnaki alphabet. Until the fall of the Tower of Babel, the biblical metaphor for the rise of the Empire of Babylon under the patron city-state deity Marduk, there was only one spoken language, understood by all people alive on earth at the time. In this lecture, we will follow how this original silent language of signs and symbols evolved into the modern-day Tarot, the lost language of the fallen gods, the Sumerian pantheon, the Anunnaki. We begin with the pre-diluvial Levant Natufians, ancestors of the Kebaran cave culture who dwelt near the Sea of Galilee. The Natufian tribes lived in massive proto-cities between 10,000 and 8,000 years ago until the deluge. The non-verbal, gestural, and guttural grunt and growl communication method shared by all animals on earth in place of vocal cord dialects was enough of a framework for ancient people to communicate all the most complex concepts of society even as it exists to the modern day. This more directly telepathic method of communication allowed for early Homo sapiens to develop their minds in silence without feeling spied on by the minds of others or overseen by the all-seeing eye of God. Originally, signification, writing, epistemology, etc., evolved from a method of counting using one's fingers. Each phalange bone of each digit, besides the thumb, was counted, 1 to 12 in a specific order, and this formed the backbone of the first zodiac. Granted, the ancient Kebaran and Natufians would have only reckoned these as number sums, not by the complex method of numerological astrology we use today to attach meaning to the zodiac of twelve. Nonetheless, in the ancient art of palm reading, we find the origins of the first method of reckoning traits as sums in a list. The zodiac of twelve signs, as we know it now, did not, it is currently believed, exist in all its present detail until some five thousand years ago, after the flood. However, the use of the number-based system of twelve did occur in early counting systems, and this was the first inclination toward symbology in the mind of mankind. By simply counting one's own digits and palm mounds and hollows with one's opposable thumb, one has begun to invent written language and verbal communication. Because the ancients were aware of the twelve-base number system we dub today the zodiac, we cannot doubt they were also aware, by at least 5,000 years ago, of the various geometric implications of the 12 base symbol set slash number system. Because there are 12 symbols of the zodiac, and 12 exposed edges of two stacked cubes, signifying a single cube over time, we can begin to see the method of germination in the mind of early mankind of the psychic concepts we now call a Kabbalah. The five precursors to alphabetic language are therefore to be found alike keys hidden in the very pattern of one's own hand itself. The five symbols commonly used nowadays to test for telepathic potential are, in reality, prehistorically ancient in original usage. The circle, the cross, the square, the pentacle, and the flood sign or trinity are ancient symbols with nascently universal geometric applications. Contemporary to the development of this 12 base counting system and 5 symbol idealism was the later Paleolithic development by the Moksha, hunter-gatherer cave dwellers of the Siberian tundra, of the method of rendering numerals as groups of slashes in patterns on tally sticks, allowing them to calculate mathematically using digits up to four placeholders, i.e. in the thousands. This form of complex math ushered in the Neolithic fascination with the stars and heavens, 
culminating in the worship of a pantheon of celestial gods. From the earliest calculations of the lunar month as 29 days to the Lubombo bone tally stick from 30,000 years ago, until the deluge 8,000 years ago, humanity evolved at a pace in harmonious tune with its environment, and we did so in the same silence as domestic pets use to communicate with one another today. The earliest ideograms are currently believed to be the 16 distinct Jiha symbols engraved on tortoise shells in China some 8,600 years ago. The depiction we see here is of a person outside a house being looked down on by a large eye. For 2,300 years, mankind remained in silence. Then, 7,300 years ago, we find the one side engraved small tablets recovered from Turdus, Transylvania, engraven with the Vinca symbols, considered a form of proto writing. Contemporary to these, we find in Despilio, Greece, an engraven wooden tablet that contains a much more obvious form of proto alphabet. Then came the flood, some 6,000 years ago. Next, 5,400 to 5,200 years ago, from the earliest Bronze Age, pre-Sumerian Mesopotamian culture of Uruk, the system of writing called cuneiform began to develop. Cuneiform arose as a pictographic system of more than 1,000 unique characters, However, by the era of the Late Bronze Age, post-Sumerian Ugaritic and Old Persian alphabetic ciphers, the alphabet of 27, 25, or 52 letters represents a later far more advanced form of use of this alphabetic script. Also from 5,300 years ago, in Egyptian Abydos, along the west bank of the Nile in Upper Egypt, come the earliest examples of proto-hieroglyphics, small inscribed clay tablets with untranslated pictographs on them from the era of Scorpion I, a pre-dynastic ruler of Upper Egypt. By the height of development of hieroglyphics in Egypt, Contemporary to the height of cuneiform writing in Mesopotamia, around 4,000 years ago, 24 specific uniliteral hieroglyphics evolved, accompanied by 103 biliteral, one glyph symbolizing a two-syllable sound, and at least 48 triliterals. 4,000 to 3,000 years ago, between the era of Minoan and Mycenaean rule in Crete, arose a twin pair of fully functional lingual syllabary written alphabets. Linear A and B both use essentially the same basic letters, however are written in two distinct dialectic languages. Linear A in Minoan and Linear B in Mycenaean. The linear letter languages consist of 87 syllabic combined consonant vowel sound letters as well as ideograms quantifying or qualifying the context of the written language. Although cuneiform and hieroglyphics both continued to be used in the Levant until at least 2,000 years ago, they would eventually wither away beside the use of the more conventional alphabetic precursor offered by Linear B. Although cuneiform signifies phonetic sounds as shaped symbols and hieroglyphics depict ideograms as combined sounds, Linear B represents letters as both pictographic ideograms as well as phonetic sound logograms. Cuneiform and hieroglyphics could express ideas in words, but neither alone could become the basis for phonetic alphabets that Linear B, by combining both, became. 
Next, arising from the Mediterranean port city of Byblos in Lebanon, some 3,800 to 3,500 years ago, comes a strange, undeciphered script that is presumed to be a syllabary. It contains examples side by side of at least six common hieroglyphics and no less than eleven later Phoenician alphabet letters. There are at least ninety and as many as a hundred and fourteen individual symbols in the Biblos syllabary and together comprise a text of one thousand and forty six characters long. The Biblos syllabary, though undeciphered as yet, is believed to be the key to unlocking the origin of the Phoenician alphabet. From around 3,400 to 3,050 years ago, the first true alphabet appeared as the list of 22 Phoenician letters. These are credited with being the original mixed consonant and vowel alphabet of phonetic sounds cataloged as uniliterals, or single letters. The 22-letter Phoenician alphabet became the 22 letters of Aramaic, which became the 22 basic letters of modern Hebrew. The Phoenician alphabet became the 24-letter Greek alphabet and the 26-letter Etruscan alphabet of pre-Latin Italy. The 26-letter Etruscan alphabet would sire forth the 24 runes of Elder Futhark, and from the Latins who replaced the Etruscans, the Hellenistic Roman alphabet would be born. By the reign of Hammurabi, from 3,696 to 3,654 years ago, we find the establishment of the awful empire of Babylon, whose patron city-state deity was the mighty war god Marduk. At this time, as it is described in Genesis 11, 5 through 9, the Lord God came down upon the building of the Tower of Babel, and there he cursed us all to the dispersion of languages, the so-called confusion of the tongues.